Welcome to another episode of Monster Review where we take a look at tech and tech tips, including how-to videos. If you ever watched my review on the SmartThings Hub, you already know that I am no fan of the SmartThings door sensor. I believe they are total crap and mine's broke within a couple of months of using it. And to replace it is ridiculous. You need to shell out 40 bucks for one sensor. That's not cool, especially for such a crappy product. I recently came across a deal from Yaomi. They were offering their door sensors for 8 bucks on UAG. The sensors were very small, meaning less noticeable, and looked a whole lot better than SmartThings door sensor. However, there are two drawbacks. Number one, it's not officially supported by SmartThings, so a little tinkering is needed. Number two, it doesn't do temperature, it's just an open and closed sensor. But for 8 bucks, I'd learn code if I had to just to make this thing work. But don't freak out, no coding is necessary. Well, it is, but you can find a pre-written code online, which I'll show you later in this video. So first off, let's do a quick unboxing of this door sensor. All right, so here we got the box. Um, I have two of them. This is, uh, this is gonna be the one that I'm gonna open. Um, let me put this one away. Get my knife here. It's really small. It's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. All right, so it's well packed. Um, we have the instructions here. It's the first thing you're greeted with. Is it in English or Chinese? Yes, it's in Chinese. Okay, no problem. I can just use my translate app to translate this instruction for me. The QR code. Um, all right, so these are the sensors. Wow, this is incredible. This is this is really really small. It's like um, <laughs> it's probably like I don't know. It looks like a tablet really, uh, but it, it's really small. And this no, actually the magnet is like a tablet, but um, this is it's really attractive. I, I like the way it looks. It looks a whole lot better than that square design that smart things have going for themselves. Um, and it's really small, so it's not going to stick out like a sore thumb. Whoops. But yeah, this, man, I, I can't get over how small this thing is. Sheesh. Um, is there anything else in here? Oh, so we got some more sticky pads. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Some Just some sticky pads if you, you know, if you want to... If you need another um, double-sided tape, but essentially that's how it's going to go on the door. Man, I still can't get over how small this is. Let me open it here so we can see what's inside. Okay, so we got the battery and we got the Zigbee chip. Um, yeah, this is this is way better than the uh, SmartThings design. Granted, the smart things sensor has a temperature sensor also, but I'm not really, I don't really care for that. Let me close this back. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So now that you got a look at the sensor right out of the box, let me show you how to set it up with your smart things hub. All links you need will be in the description below. First, click on the link below for the smart things IDE webpage. Log in with your SmartThings email and password. Next, click on the link below for the GitHub webpage. Once on that page, you'll see 284 lines of code added by a username Wayne. Shout out to Wayne because without this code, it wouldn't be so easy adding the Yaomi sensor. So you want to copy the entire code from line 1 to 284. Once you copy the code, go back to the tab with the SmartThings IDE webpage. Click on My Device Handlers on the top, then click on Create Device Handler. Click on From Code and paste the code to the empty field below. Then click on Create. I already created the device handler, so no need for me to click Create. So now the somewhat hard part. We need to get the device ID in order to add it to SmartThings. Because SmartThings does not officially support these sensors, we need to get creative. So. To get the device ID for the sensors, click on My Locations, the name of your SmartThings hub, look for Hub, and click on the hub name hyperlink. Then click on List Events, 
and on your phone using the SmartThings app, add a new device. While the app is looking for a new device, take a find tool and hold the pair button for three to five seconds. Let go and then do one quick press. If you do it correctly, you should see the light flash three times slowly and after the quick press, you should see some rapid flashing. It might take a couple of tries before you get it, so just be patient and hang in there. Once done correctly, going back to your computer that is logged into SmartThings IDE, you should see under list events a catch all like this. Click on the date and time, so now you can see the entire catch all. Now from the left, count seven chars. Your device ID will be the seventh char. So in my case, my device ID is AC85. Make sure to write down your device ID. Next, click on my devices, plus new device and enter the device name you want to give your sensor. I'm going to call it sliding door. Under network ID, type in the device ID. Under type, scroll all the way down to the bottom and select the Omni door sensor. The code you entered earlier creates this device type in your SmartThings account. Select a location and hub and click create. Once done, your device will non-officially be added to SmartThings. Go back to your app and under your devices, you should see the new sensor. Take the sensor and magnet and test it to make sure it works. Once you verify it works, install it and you're good to go. Now a couple of things you need to know. If you add the sensor and it doesn't register with the sensor is open or closed, then repeat the process to add the sensor again. Make sure you delete the sensor before trying to add it again. I had to do the entire process twice before it started to register open and close. If you get it up and running and all of a sudden device is unavailable, again, delete it and add it again. Mine became unavailable only one hour after install, so I had to do the process again. But don't worry. I've had mine installed for over three weeks now and it has been working great. I haven't had to delete and re-add it since. The sensors are very responsive and you can create recipes using them just like you would with the SmartThings sensor. I like them a lot. What I like most about them is the price. I did want to get a bunch more so I can also use my SmartThings as a security system. I would need to install sensors on every door and windows and as you can imagine that can be pretty expensive with the SmartThings sensors. But with these sensors at $8, I would definitely be getting more so I can start using SmartThings as a security system. And that's all I have on this video. Thanks for watching and hope I was able to help you. For questions or comment, leave them in the comment section below. Like the video if you found it helpful. Thumbs down works also. And I'll see you next time.